We are excited nonetheless to um, welcome a legendary MVP quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. You can currently see him every Sunday on CBS, the NFL Today, every morning on the Boomer and Geo Show on WFAN. Boomer, how are you? Hi, Kay. It's great to see you. Uh, Merry Christmas, as you Thank can see you. in the background. I'm in a little quiz Christmas wonderland here, just wondering whether or not you're going to send me a Dick's Sporting Goods gift card. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think yeah, you are. Who needs this a Dick's Sporting Goods gift card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you get for being an MVP quarterback. And I just get this one for being a lowly fan. Uh, Boomer, <laughs> how, are the ki how are the grandkids, Boompa? What's going on? This season, you got to share yeah. an amazing moment with your grandkiddos. Talk to me about what happened in Cincinnati. You had Casper, you had Winnie, you had Alice as you were inducted into the Bengals Ring of Honor. It was absolutely oh great. Gosh. There's Winnie and Casper with me right there. Casper is Gunner's son, so we've come full circle, uh, Kay. It was an amazing night for me and Chad Johnson and his family and being able to share that with my granddaughter, Winnie, right there. There's <laughs> nothing better in life. I can tell you that right now. She's such an adorable little girl. And and Casper was running around on the field beforehand. So uh, it was a most memorable night for me. And I couldn't say thank you enough to the Cincinnati Bengals for finally actually instituting a ring of honor after all these years. And credit, I mean, I imagine some credit to Elizabeth Blackburn, who's, of course, the director of strategy. She's the director. I mean, she's just the, such a badass. And she's turned things around so much, huh? She has taken the Cincinnati Bengals into the new century, that's for sure. And uh, she has brought with her a sense of professionalism. Not that they didn't have that sense before, but now she understands or they understand the marketing angle, what the season ticket holders want. And the one thing I did see that Monday night against the Rams mm -hmm. was exactly what a quarterback can do for a franchise. And that's, of course, Joe Burrow. Uh, they were wearing the whites that night. They won. They beat the Rams. I was able to go in with Chad Johnson. And it was remarkable uh, just kind of feeling, seeing how that team and that city has responded to the success that they've had with Joe Burrow as quarterback. Mm. What's your best Chad Johnson story? <laughs> I don't really have one. I mean, oh, the, the Chad on. Johnson that I was with was a completely different person that you and I may see with, uh, you know, Shannon Sharp on their podcast or uh, some of the uh, the hijinks that he would pull on the field. The, the other interesting thing is uh, Terrell Owens was there that night. And it was great to see Terrell and uh, him supporting uh, uh, Chad was great also. I, you know, I didn't expect all that to go on, but uh, that was a nice surprise. I like that we're calling him Chad Johnson and not Ocho Cinco. Yes. Both of us, we're just, we're so, you know, <laughs> we're, yeah, prim and proper. Uh, okay, talk to me about Jake Browning. Bengals went over the Jags. Unbelievable. First road win on Monday Night Football since you beat the Browns, by the way, back in 1990 yes. at, a, at a boomer. Uh, you held that mm -hmm. record for 33 years. It's broken by a backup quarterback who stunk against the Steelers. What's going on? What do you make of this? You know, there were a lot of records I used to hold back in the day that are now all being slaughtered, I should say. Uh, you know, for Jake Browning, man, what a performance. You know, he didn't have a great performance last week against Pittsburgh. I think they kind of held back a little bit. But they mm. also were really healthy offensively for the first time this year. And T. Higgins was back in the lineup and Jamar Chase just went off. And, of course, Joe Mixon did all the heavy lifting. And the, and the line did a really good job, I thought, of blocking for him. I think he was only sacked twice. And the interception comes because Tyler Boyd's got to be asked to throw football, I mean, which is mindless, and, and you know, especially when it doesn't work out. But for Jake, it was great. And I love what he said after the game. He goes, you know, I haven't played a lot of football in the last few years. But you know what? I've won a lot of football games when I did play. He played 54 games in college at the University of Washington, and he was a Pac-12 player of the year. So there was some success with him. It's just nice to see a guy like him get an opportunity to do it again, even though he didn't do it great last week. But not only do it, but put that performance out there, Kay. I mean, that is that was uh, – uh, I mean, that was just an awesome performance. I'm happy for him, and I'm certainly happy for his family. And then, of course, if you're happy if you're a Bengals supporter, because it's not only that, it's not only the prime time of it all, but it's the playoff atmosphere, as it was a season-saving situation. They're at 6-6. Six and six. Let's do the thing that sports media people do, and look yeah. at the schedule. And you tell me, with everything I'm hearing you say about Jake Browning getting his first career win as an NFL starter here, can they do this? Balanced attack, can they make a run and get in? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I think they would have to win every single one of these games, and they're not, not going to be easy. And they're going to have to get the 10 wins because their uh, conference record is so bad and their division record is so bad. They probably would line up uh, losing all the tie-breaking scenarios. So I think they would have to get the 10 wins, and getting to 10 wins, they would have to win four out of those five games. I, I just I don't necessarily know that that can be done, to be realistic about it. 
Yeah, Boomer keeping it realistic. I'm over here like, yeah, let's go, beat the Colts. We'll see. It'll be interesting, and, and I like that they're still alive. The Jags on the other side, they were like, hey, let's go in there casually. We have our first game sit here since 2011. Let's get the one seed. Why not? Let's get the one seed. Trevor Lawrence injury happens. It has been such a brutal year at the quarterback position as far as injuries, especially in the AFC. Boomer, if the playoffs started today, four teams making the playoffs would be starting backup quarterbacks, okay? If you look at this list, which quarterback, which team with these backups gives you the most confidence in the dance? I, I got to say Gardner Minshew right now. I mean, you know, he makes it interesting. Uh, it's not always pretty. Uh, he runs around a little bit like Fran Tarkin didn't used to back in the day. I mean, he seems like he's got the guts and guile that it takes to take chances down the field. Uh, he does have one of the better defenses in, in football. I don't know about Joe Flacco, what they're going to do in Cleveland. I actually thought Joe played really well with the exception of the interception uh, last week when they were down by a point and all of a sudden the, the momentum changed in that game. Uh, but out of all of these guys here and the situations that they find themselves in, I would have to say that it would be Gardner Minshew. I, I don't necessarily know that I trust anybody else on that list, simply because I think Gardner may actually have the best defense out of the group. Yeah, and Gardner's got the Bengals' defense this week, a big game for them, of course, and they're super banged up, so Coach Lou's going to really have to come up with some new tricks without Cam Taylor, Britt, and company. With this quarterback situation, is there anything I'm supposed to like learn from this? I hate it, you hate it, everyone hates it. Injuries to yeah. star quarterbacks has always been a thing. This year seems kind of weird, especially because they've made so many rule changes, Boomer, to protect these guys. I don't remember grow, growing up watching quarterbacks and seeing this many. Is this a fluky thing, or do we have to go even further to protect quarterbacks? I think it's a fluky thing, to be honest with you, Kay. I, I just, you know, when you think about the lower leg injuries, mm -hmm. and, you know, Trevor getting stepped on last night, and it started with Aaron Rodgers blowing out his Achilles on Monday night against the Bills. I just you know, these things happen. Uh, maybe they just happen in bunches. But I, I know that people pay big money to see the big name players. And unfortunately, when you lose guys like Joe Burrow and Aaron Rodgers, and Deshaun Watson, and now we lose Trevor Lawrence for an extended period of time, that's not good for the league. That's not good for anybody. That's not good for the product. But I will say, watching Jake Browning last night, watching Gardner Minshew, these guys have come in and they've uh, you know, actually put up some pretty good numbers and they've won with these backup quarterbacks. So we always argue on the NFL today about an insurance policy and who is your insurance policy. And right now, Gardner Minshew seats the best to be the best insurance policy. And I also would have liked to have seen Carolina earlier in the year start the year with Andy Dalton and then maybe bring Bryce Young in about halfway through the year as opposed to starting him right away and then putting him right back in after he had gotten injured. So, I mean, there's a lot of bad decisions being made out there, but there's also... Uh, I think it's a victim of circumstances and coincidences now. Yeah, a great point on Andy Dalton. That would have been savvy yep. and wise to have probably done with a struggling Carolina team. I, think, I just feel like some people might think, or I've heard, that like lower leg injuries are happening more because guys are trying to avoid those helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits. That could be that could be the case. Uh, we do talk about that a lot uh, with J.J. Watt now and Coach Cower and you know, the, the defenders are in such a bad spot. They don't want to get fined. They don't want to be perceived as being dirty players. Uh, it's out there for everybody to see. Everybody on social media has an opportunity to comment on it. And I do think players are trying to take the head out of the game. But then again, then again, you have a guy like Logan Wilson who does all he's supposed to do. And there's this hip drop tackle discussion now. And we're at the point where if you're a defensive player, I really don't know what you can do to get a guy to the ground anymore. So um, there's got to be a lot more discussion of that this offseason. But I can understand why people would think that lower legs uh, equate with the fact of trying to get the head yeah. out of the game from a defensive perspective. All right, let's get to the good stuff. That was just a little aperitif, a little uh, – we just got – let's get to yeah. – you're in the biggest market. You're covering it. The rotate the, the drama in New York. It's perfect. I'm headed there today. I'm like, I don't need to go to a Broadway show. I can just read the back page of the Post with Brian <laughs> Costello talking about the Jets situation. It takes another spin with this rotating situation of the quarterback reporting that they want to make a switch at QB. They're leaning towards going back to Zach Wilson, Zach more reluctant uh, to step back in. That's to putting it lightly. Can you blame the guy? Yes, I can. Uh, there's no excuse uh, to be reluctant about going back on the football field if you're a quarterback, especially if you're Zach Wilson, who's been given, I don't know how many chances, probably at least 20 different chances. You know, this is a team that has uh, set the futility record for scoring touchdowns in a season through 12 games. I think the mm. 93 Bengals, which I was not a part of, by the way, uh, you know, held the record <laughs> prior to that. So and Zach Wilson was a big part of all of this. But 
you know, Zach has got to grow up. You know, uh, we we say here in New York, you got to grow some stones, and he uh, hasn't shown the ability to have that. I know that there's offensive line issues. I know that there are offensive coordinator issues, but at the end of the day, you know, he wasn't supposed to be the guy, but now that he is the guy, you have to seize the moment. You know, Jake Browning seized the moment, yeah. uh, and I, I'm I'm so sick and tired of hearing about you know, uh, you know baby in this kid i mean he's no longer a kid he's a man he's been in the league for four years three years now so i would say this uh okay i think his agents probably called the general manager joe douglas and said you know he's really reticent to play and then i think joe douglas probably called aaron Rodgers and said will you call this kid and tell him if we get another opportunity to play he better come in here and get it and i think that's why he went to go see robert sala yesterday their day off in his office and say i want the ball regardless of what anybody is saying in my world i want the ball so hopefully he will put that to rest and i think they're actually going to go and play him again this week i actually thought two weeks ago they should have cut him a compassionate release if you will and uh now that he's here he becomes now another distraction for a jet team that has had nothing but distractions this year but I would put him out there and let him throw 50 times for the next five games and see if he has it. And maybe he can uh, resurrect his career somewhere else after this. That's a very thoughtful response to that. And, you know, I, I like that you're putting accountability on him. What sort of accountability goes onto the Hackett's and the Salas of the world in the handling of all this? Or even just this well, getting out all, there? Yeah, you know what? I think uh, I don't know where all this comes from. I know that uh, Rob Sala has a, a text thread with, uh, one of the biggest uh, Jet fans that I know of, his name is Joe Beningo. He's also a personality here in New York on the radio. And Joe kind of outed some of those text messages mm. with Robert Sala yesterday, which was really a bad job on Joe's part. But it just goes to show you, it makes you wonder whether or not Rob Sala really should be the, quarter, uh, the head coach of this team. If he's texting with a, a friend of his, things back and forth and his friend is misinterpreting those texts and then bringing those texts to the, the light of, uh, you know, the, the, the most powerful radio station in the country at WFAN. So it was a bad job all around, bad on Joe's part, bad on Robert's uh, part, even dealing with uh, Joe. So I, I think that one has to wonder whether or not Rob Sala is long for this job after the season is over. I mean, Boomer is, you should see my producer Marissa's face. She's like, mm. oh, it's okay, cringeworthy. Boomer I'm telling you, it's came cringeworthy. with it today. It is a little cringeworthy, but uh, if you can, you want to hear more takes like that, guys. Of course, you can see Boomer on the NFL today, but also check him out on the Boomer and Geo Show on WFAN uh, and give our love to your grandkids, of course, Casper, Winnie, and Alice. We're gonna go from you, Boomer. Hey, everybody! Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adams.